onto the Volta Ciclista of Catalonia stage five. It was a 200k stage from La Pobla de Segur to Manres. It's just a real, if you were a rider or a DS on Ineos, you'd be like, oh, 200, those <laughs> climbs, 2,500 metres climbing, two main climbs a day. First early for break formation, the Col de Comioles. Not too threatening though, like oh, 6Ks, 5%, 7Ks, 5%. Then with about 25Ks to go, it, the, uh, the last climb and crest, crested the Port de Montserrat, 7Ks at about 6.5%. So that's a little bit harder than a sort of ridge undulations, than a long up and down descent to the finish in Manresa northwest of Barcelona in the Catalan region. This blew up Benji. Before live coverage, me and Benji were following via the <laughs> tweets. We were like, what the fuck is going on? Was there <laughs> any moment, Benji, where you thought Adam Yates is actually not going to win this <laughs> Catalonia? Actually, no. I think that the initial news that was that a breakaway of 12 was gone, which was not really troublesome. But Ineos started pulling that back because they probably thought to themselves, well, this 12-man group is, is too much. We want like four hours to get away because then then we can control <laughs> everything beautifully and then we don't need to care all day and then they can just go on their jolly way and take the stage. But, um, well, they pulled that back and for a second it looked like we had a two-man breakaway after that with on the top of the uh, first climb. We had a Cavagna mohoric attack and those two riders were getting a bit of a gap, but the descent afterwards just exploded the entire peloton because I don't know how it happened. We don't know how it happened. But suddenly the ticker was showing that we had a breakaway of those two riders. But then a group of 44 riders in total that were chasing back <laughs> these two riders. And not a single Ineos rider was in this group. But the advantage for Ineos here was that while their initial plan of not having a large breakaway was failing completely... So they had to chase all day from that point. They didn't have anyone GC treacherous in that group. I think Biscara was the first one in that group yeah, on four, four minutes, minutes and seven seconds. So it, it's not super close. It's also not super far. So they will still need to work all day. And I think their plan of having a smaller breakaway by bridging up the 12-man breakaway kind of backfired. But I think that's uh, in hindsight. <laughs> we can't say anything. Oh, no, the Benji. The... The breakaway that was now 3.35 <laughs> ahead of them and having a pace full it had the same riders that were in it. They paced back anyway, and I don't know why they were too <laughs> fussed about them. It still had Knox, Valta, Moric, uh, Ida Schelling, Goldstein, Davide La Cruz. They were in the initial move that they brought back in the first 20Ks, and this is why the Tour de France is great if you're like a fanatic. You can see all this action in the break formation in these medium mountain stages with the battle between the GC teams being like, oh, don't like that break, and then it's full gas. And they get brought back. But, yeah, that group of those riders I mentioned, they had 40 seconds on this 40-man group with Kreisweik and Biscara. I was looking at the ticker like, I wouldn't mind some live coverage right now. Then another gap of 90 seconds plus back to Ineos with it strung out. Average speed, like 47 k's an hour for three hours. Crazy. Um, and so, yeah, Ineos, which is pacing. Movistar, I think, Benji? Had they? No, they had Soler. They had Soler up front in the uh, Aronsman shelling group. And then counterattacks started to happen. Remy Cavagna attacked on like a rolling climb with 53 and a half Ks to go. Everyone looked at each other and was like, don't feel like chasing back <laughs> Remy Cavagna. There weren't many teams in that group. The 40, like 40 plus man group wasn't working too well together. Ineos were pacing. They were 447 behind Cavagna with 30 Ks to go. So he it's pretty much just riding solo. Um, but he lost so much time on that last climb, Benji. He had the climby boys chasing him, Reichenbach, Kreisweik, uh, Biscara, Kemner, Verona for Movistar. And, yeah, I think they caught him 
over the crest. And then what happened then? It exploded again with that break. Yes, it exploded again, but it were like these these attacks left and right and left and right from that point because they went into this descent that leads towards, well, um, the finish line, obviously. <laughs> and um, on the top there, you, you notice that the three riders that were initially catching uh, Cavagna were the Kreisweg, Verona, and uh, another rider. Oh, it's, and it's just Harper. Was it, was it Harper? I think it might have been Harper. Oh. Okay. I think you got thing, but uh, in the end, Sorry. I think that... Sorry, uh, Chris. <laughs> I think that I, well, I wasn't memeing. Verona... I, was, I was actually a mistake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that Verona was the next rider to go on a solo ride, and that yes. solo ride didn't take too long, and it, it really came down to him getting caught and a bit of the, the chaos that ensues when somebody gets caught, who's going to take over, who's going to do something that allowed another rider to give an opportunity to go on the attack, and that was going into the final 10 kilometers already. And then Ed Kemna took the left side of the road, passed everybody in the descent, and the first rider in the group, which was Verona, who just got caught, did not react directly. And the rest of the group didn't yeah. go past Verona. So he gets this initial gap of like 100 meters, 200 meters, and that easily becomes a good 10 seconds, 15 seconds, if nobody in the group behind directly goes for the counterattack. I think the first one to do so was Elijah's Bear, but that was already at a moment where I was like, Kemna's gone. The man's super tucking against the 1st of April band that is coming up. And he was like, oh yeah, I'm going to take this one home. And I, I completely believe from that point onwards that there was nothing except for like bad luck that could pull him out of this position. Yeah, it was a group that didn't have any teams with multiple teammates except for Uran and Ruben Guerrero and Education First, Nippo behind him. And you could just see we weren't getting time caps on this descent uh we we had the time gap to Ineos which was they were just pacing with Castro Viejo and Dennis and then Carapaz actually on this last climb on a day they would like to forget two days in a row Ineos have had to work way harder than they would have hoped to uh because of breakaways today it was maybe their fault but yeah that group of Biscara, Kreuzweig, Knox, Dora, Steele Smith, Reichenbach, maybe Benji Reichenbach got on the front before one of the corners in the descent and let a 15-second gap <laughs> go. He's not the man you want chasing on a descent. Ask Tom Dumoulin uh, from the Giro 2018. So Leonard Kemner, I counted it when he went under the flam rouge. He had a 30-second gap. He's a quick descender. We saw on yesterday's stage in his early move, he did barely lost any time to Ineos on the descent towards the last climb of Porta and, and today, God, he was quick on that descent, super tucking, Froome super tucking, pedaling uh, whilst in that position. Do you see? I mean, Benji, there's going to be so many comments on my highlight video being like, why wasn't he sent to UCI prison because he got <laughs> in uh, Lausanne? But, <laughs> yeah, great to see Kemner after missing out on stage one, maybe GC not going the way he wanted, Sagan not looking great for Bora Hansgrohe, Kelderman. Kelderman's actually looked good, actually, for a guy that was so seriously injured. But Bora not getting something with shelling from the break, winning today's stage with Leonard Kemner. Massive result for them. Ahead of... I think it was Ruben Guerrero, Benji, and then Biscara, a deserved third, 39 and 42 seconds back. Then a group of Smith, Dan Martin, Morich, Knox, Falter, Uran, and Kreuzweig. GC, no real changes. I think Kamner must have lost. He must have got properly dropped yesterday when he got caught by Dennis, Benji. I didn't realise that. Uh, so Kamner, that was maybe why. He appeared in that breakaway so easily today. But big win for him. A question, Benji. Is Kemna Raphael Micah and should embrace that and try and rack up those Grand Tour stage wins? Or should he focus on GC and, you know, the, the Molima thing? I've got my view on it, but I want to see what you think. I think the problem that he clearly has right now is that he's a combination of both and doesn't know what to choose. 
and it's hard for us to make the decision for that but i believe that he can win multiple stage wins in a grand tour if he goes for that but he more needs in to make the decision for yeah in detour for example but he needs to make the decision of doing that for himself does he want to pull this forward and become a rider that can land in the back of the top 10 8th 9th 10th in a grand tour somewhere or does he want to extend this and go for stage win it's the same thing we saw with Godu at the Vuelta last year Kamna could yeah. do the exact same thing winning two stages but he could also do what Godu can probably do which is getting 8th 9th or 10th in a grand tour somewhere yeah I think for Bora I know this is just once one stage race but Kelderman's TT is pretty money, you got to say. Like, first TT on new equipment after he, what, he broke his fucking back or something? Like, I thought he pretty badly hurt himself in that crash not that long ago. And he was really good in that TT. We got 55Ks of TT in the tour. I think, yeah, Kelderman's consistent. I think, I mean, I've been critical of him before, but you got to say a guy coming back that quickly from injury and performing that well, coming top 10, top six here, it's pretty solid. And I think he should be their top 10 GC guy tour. And I think if you want the headlines and to get Germany hyped, I think Kamner going for big mountain stage wins is the play at the moment. But listen... We've seen with the salaries, if you want to earn the big, big money, top 10 Tour de France results on GC seems to be what gets people paid a lot of money. Like a lot of people look at, yeah, some riders that have got top 10, top 5 GC results and like, wow, you get paid a lot for someone who doesn't win that often compared to someone like uh, De Hent or, or someone. But yeah. What do you think he should do, Benji? If you or if you were Bora, do you think that I'm drawing too much from this race? Or yeah, what would you do if you were Bora? Um, if I was him, I would like to win more stages than getting in the back of a top ten because I'd like to win more than getting eighth, ninth, or ten in a Grand Tour. But the problem is, if you never test out to become an eighth, ninth, or ten rider, then you also don't know yeah. if there are capabilities in you that lead to something more in the future. So, uh, I don't know what Bora needs to decide. I think that when it comes to the Tour de France, it's difficult because there's actually not too much like heavy duty, huge mountain stages. But if he loses two to four minutes on, on no, two mountain I think stages, that's good. then it's an issue. Yeah. Because you'll have the scenario where the GC teams, maybe if Ineos or whatever, have time with Thomas or Walfenard or Roglic have time or Pagac have time the GC teams we like oh, descent finish not much to gain on GC here on the Von 2 stage for example uh, maybe you know maybe they're like oh descent finish how much time on GC can you, can you gain famous last words Camner descent finish outstanding so yeah I know last year he said he really wants to try to see what level he can get on GC. I think I agree he should definitely try that. The TT, um, maybe cost himself with a stage one move. I think this year, if I was him, I'd go stage hunting in the tour, build your name, and then re- really focus on Vuelta GC. He can get a top 10 in the Vuelta, I think. Um, yeah. So I know I know it's different sort of climbs, but... He's a really good climber, and yes, Pagat and Roglic will probably be there, but the field is not as deep. The teams are not as stacked. The trains are not as strong as the Tour de France. But yeah, Catalonia, stage six tomorrow is from Tarragona to Mataro. Another oh, up and down, over 2,000 metres elevation gain, 203-kilometre stage, just a nasty one. This is a hard one-week race at Catalonia. Only two categorized climbs, none other of which particularly scary. Ten and a half Ks, three percent, three three Ks at three percent, cresting about oh fifteen Ks from the finish. In my preview, I was like Renny Cavagna. 
all day, every day of breakaway because that last climb absolutely <laughs> destroyed him. He, yeah, whereas these climbs aren't as threatening. Break, surely it's a breakaway tomorrow. Benji and Ineos won't care about this stage. Well, it depends how many people are in the break. If it's 50 people, then they have to care at some <laughs> yeah. point. 80, so, uh, 80 riders. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the benefit for the breakaway is that it's got a climbing section at the start of the stage, which means that there's a possibility for a lot of riders to get away, 12 to 14 riders perhaps. But if it's 12 riders, then it looks like Ineos decides to uh, counter that. So, yeah, I'm curious. It's going to be a, a tougher day than people might think because despite it not having huge climbs, it does look like it goes up and down straight from the start to the finish line. And yeah, I think that you might be very much right when it comes to the uh, the outcome being a breakaway. I uh, I see that Movistar needs to try something. Like they haven't gotten anything oh, yeah. out of this Catalonia. They need to try something. Soler is not looking too bright. Corona is looking better than Soler, which means a lot. And I don't know who else can can try and win this one. I, I'd love to name like a rider that Indeed. I could say, this man could say. Morich. Perhaps I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, uh, yeah, that's a very good question. I don't have a clue. So I'm going to Alex straight Kev. up shout. Clément Champoussin. Okay. You want to be like that? All right. Yeah. Or yeah, like that. They're my picks. I hope Israel led Impy in the break. He hasn't looked too crash hot, but yeah, Mohoric, I feel a bit stronger about uh, Dion Smith as well. And uh, Dion Smith, Alexander Camp, if there's a fairly large break, I think, yeah, they're good shouts for the stage. And if there's not a break and they're in the bunch, well, Sagan, Dion Smith, Alexander Camp, because the sprint field here. Is non-existent. Um, I nearly forgot Benji. Mark Hershey, where is he? Are you surprised? No, uh, he's clearly not where he needs to be. That's for sure. He was in that forty-four man group, and he just dropped when it started going up. So oh, was he in there? He was in there. So uh, that says a lot, I think. And um, I had a, a message earlier today. Hershey washed? Question mark. I don't think he's washed, but. He's clearly not where oh, he needs geez. to be. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's a bit early much. to call someone washed, but <laughs> uh, he's literally like twenty-two years old <laughs> in his first race of the year, and he seemed to work into it last year, I think, uh, as well. He did. He did Provence, Tour de Zelp, Maritime du Var, and Dauphiné without. I mean, better. Results, that must be said, at the end of the Dauphiné, but Provence and etc. the other races, nothing outlandish. And then the Tour, he was on form. So expect him to be better at Basque Country in that starts in just over a week. And then he's got a bit of a gap. And then Amstel, Flesch, Liège, which are his big targets, obviously, before Swiss Tour de France. So this is the start of a pretty long uh, block for him, although nah, there's a month and a half between Liège and Swiss, but yeah, he's peaking for Flesh and Liège, not for Catalonia, it seems. But that was our Catalonia stage five recap. Stage six, hopefully, be pretty chaotic tomorrow for the circuit in Barcelona on stage seven. Hope you enjoyed it. Give us a review on whatever podcast player you listen to, or if you watch on YouTube, like the video. You never like the videos because it's a podcast, but y'all oh need to God. like the videos. Support us with the algorithm. Come on. All Mr. Right. Complaining is back. Ciao.